In this video, we are going to talk about how to calculate something more quickly. In this case, how to calculate common trig ratios quickly using what I call the fingers trick. Um, you may already know it. I'm going to explain it here in this video. Um, first, we're going to start with some basics, things to understand. What is a radian? Many students can't answer this even after covering pre-calculus. The teacher doesn't really explain it that well. So I'm going to try and explain it here, see if it helps you. A radian is simply, imagine you have a circle with its radius r, and you make another distance of r going straight up tangent to the first r here. Now, if I can imagine this radius going straight up as something like a wet noodle that we've just cooked, and you can now, it's flimsy or a piece of string, you're going to push it over with your finger, and it's going to come over and hit the circle so that there's no uh, air gaps or anything like that. And it's now going to have an arc length on the circle of one radius. When the arc length is one radius, you'll connect the end of that arc length to the center of the circle, and the angle that's created is one radian. So how do we answer the question, what is a radian? It's a central angle that subtends an arc of one radius, hence the name radian. So how many radians would there be in a full circle? We know there's 360 degrees, but how many radians would there be? Well, this is just contingent upon how many radii are around the outside of the circle. I think we know a formula for that. That's the circumference 2 pi r, which indicates 2 pi times the radius is the circumference, which means the radius distance occurs a total of 2 pi times around the outside of the circle. And hence, that's how many radians you get. Okay, now that we know what radians are, I want to cover about cosine of theta and sine of theta as far as unit circle is concerned or in a coordinate plane using coordinate points. Now, in the unit circle, cos of theta is x. Sine of theta is y. They are the same thing. They're synonymous. Um, outside of a unit circle with a radius other than 1, again, unit circle simply meaning the radius is 1 unit. Um, cosine will still be associated with x, and sine will still be associated with y. It's just that they would be something like, uh, if this is x and y, then x, y, and r, and cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse x over r. So still associated with the x value, even though it's not identical to it, if the radius is not 1. Okay, so now that we've covered those two topics, we're going to go to some facts about radian values. I'm not sure about you, but when I learned about radians in school, I had previously learned about degrees, and I was very comfortable with that. It felt nice and simple. And then they hit you with radians, and it's like, what just happened? And it was a little confusing. It felt like a foreign language. So what I would do is convert them back into degrees and think about the degrees which were easier for my brain to handle at that point. Later, as you get more accustomed to them, you'll simply remember what their values are by using them so much. But in the beginning, when you're first learning, maybe this will work for you. Every n pi over 6, n being any integer that doesn't simplify with 6. For example, 2 pi over 6 is really equal to pi over 3. So the n has to be... Uh, not simplify with the 6. Every n pi over 6 that fits that criteria is a 30 degree reference angle. Well, why do we care about the reference angle? The reference angle simply means the angle made with the x-axis. So if you're in the second quadrant, it would be this angle here. In the third quadrant, it would be this angle here. And in the fourth quadrant, it would be this angle here. So it's the angle made with the x-axis every time. The thing about reference angles is if I want the sine of 30 degrees, or in this case 150, in this case it'd be 210, and in this case it would be 330, all of those have the same sine value. It's just that the positive or minus sign, the plus or minus changes depending on what quadrant you're in. So we want to care about reference angles to calculate the numerical portion of our answer for quick trig calculations. Uh, every n pi over 6 is 30, every n pi over 4 is 45, every n pi over 3 is 60. 
Okay, what about the plus or minus? How do we determine that? It's really just determined by x and y. In the first quadrant, they're both positive, which means cos is positive, sine is positive, and tangent, which is the ratio of sine and cosine, is also positive, because you have a ratio of two positive numbers. In fact, you should think the tangent of theta as having a last name. And the last name is sine of theta over cos of theta. It should be the first thing you think of, perhaps, with tangent of theta. At least one of the first things you think of. Okay, so in the second quadrant, x is going this way. It's now negative and y is positive. Therefore, cosine is negative and sine is positive. And the ratio of the two, sine over cosine, will be negative. Okay, what about in the third quadrant? It goes one, two, three, four, if you forgot. The third quadrant, both x and y are negative, so both cosine and sine are negative, but tangent, the ratio of the two negatives, will be positive. And in the fourth quadrant, it goes positive, negative, cosine being positive, sine being negative. An easy, quick way to remember this using the mnemonic device is ASTC. All scholars take calculus, is what's commonly said. I know, you probably heard all students take calculus, but I submit, which would you rather be, a student or a scholar? So, all scholars take calculus is how I learned it, it's how I will express it. The letters that we use in those words, the first letters stand for what we want to remember. Sine is positive in the second quadrant, along with its reciprocal, I'll sometimes call it a flip, cosecant. In the third quadrant, tangent and its reciprocal, cotangent, are positive. In the fourth quadrant, cosine and its reciprocal, secant, are positive. So if it's not listed as what's positive, then it's negative. Okay? So how do you keep track of which one goes with what? Like I said the reciprocal of sine was cosecant. How do you keep track of that? The way I remember is there's one co per pairing. When you say sine, you don't hear a co but there's one in cosecant. But when you say cosine, you hear a co, therefore it goes with secant, which doesn't have a co. One co for each pairing. And furthermore, obviously what's left is tangent goes with cotangent. That, that should be obvious. Um, so we're not going to use the trick I'm about to show you for uh, quadrantal angles. A quadrantal angle is one that lies on the x or y axis. Instead, if you need, say, the cosine of pi, then if you can't remember what it is just off the top of your head, do a quick coordinate plane and label the point negative 1, 0. Again, cosine is x and sine is y. So the cosine of pi is negative 1, the sine of pi is 0. Just use the ordered pairs that you would find on a unit circle at the quadrantal values for quadrantal angles. So, let's get to it, the fingers trick. How does it work? Well, for starters, it was born from something else. We're going to place ordered pairs at the end of these radii, demarking 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Now, what we put in here is not what would go in a unit circle. Um, you're welcome to just memorize the unit circle. If you're really good at memorizing, maybe that's best for you. Uh, this trick will work for the rest of us. So, uh, Every value, we're talking about the value that's going to appear in here, is going to go inside a square root and then over 2, i.e. the square root of v over 2, v being the value. So if we look over here, we can see the cosine of 0 degrees is 1 because it's the x value. So tell me, what would you put inside of a square root and over 2 so that it was equal to 1? You obviously know it's 4. That's the number that goes in here, and it's going to unlock the entire chart. Now all we do is count down to 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. And sine will add up from 0 to 4. Notice the numbers in each ordered pair add up to 4. That will be useful later. Let's say we have to find the sine of 30 degrees. And then the sine of 30 if you go over here, it's the 1 inside of a square root, and over 2, it's 1 half. If you then have to find the cos of 30, just simply think the numbers add up to 4, so it must be root 3 over 2. Okay, so that's how this chart works. The cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Don't forget to put it in the square root and always over 2. 
the sine is root 2 over 2 also for 45. Incidentally, you should remember that 45 degrees or pi over 4 is when sine and cosine are equal and incidentally is when tangent will be 1. Okay, so what about the cosine of 60? It's 1 half. The sine of 60 root 3 over 2. This is cool and all, but if that's all it is, it's really just a number, another way to remember the unit circle values for common angles. So is there something more to it? That's where the fingers trick comes in. If I put my left hand over the first quadrant and put each finger on the rays, let's say I fold in my ring finger, which is located on the 30 degree mark. Now, how many fingers do I have above my ring finger? If you're like the majority of people, you're going to have three fingers there. You're also going to have one below, and those numbers correspond with the three and the one. So then I can say, if I want the sine of 30 degrees, the sine fingers are the down fingers. I fold in this finger. Look here to count the fingers that are there. There's one. It'll be square root of one over two. What if I wanted 45 degrees? Then there'll be two fingers here and two fingers here, and it will be root two over two for both cosine and sine. At 60 degrees, cosine becomes 1, which is root 1, or 1, over 2, and sine has three fingers now, which is root 3 over 2. It does work for the quadrantal. There's zero fingers above your thumb, so you'll get 0 over 2, and square root of 4 over 2 is 1. But we don't want to use the quadrantal ones. Just use these ordered pairs that you find on the unit circle. Okay, so now that we know that, what does it look like in problem solving? And how does it make it faster? Let's say that you want to know what is the sine of 19 pi over 6. What I do when I look at this, I immediately think it's a 30 degree reference angle. And the sine of 30 is 1 over 2. So I know it's 1 half. The only question is, is it positive or negative? For that, we rely on the other mnemonic device, ASTC. This will require you to quickly place the angle in the appropriate quadrant. To do that, pull off multiples of 2 pi. 2 pi will be double the denominator, 12 pi over 6. Pull that off. This will equal the sine of 7 pi over 6. So the sine of 7 pi over 6, where is that located? Well, think about pi. It's 6 pi over 6. And 7 pi over 6 is a little bit more than that. So you must be in the third quadrant, which is tangent's positive quadrant. Therefore, it's not sine's positive quadrant, and sine is negative one half. So that sounds like a lot, but that's because I'm explaining it to you. If I'm solving a problem uh, like cosine of 11 pi over 3, I can see that 12 pi over 3 is a multiple of 2 pi, and this is just before it, so I'm in quadrant 4. Cosine's positive quadrant. It's a 60 degree reference angle because it's n pi over 3. The cos of 60 is the up fingers. It's 1 half. This is going to be positive 1 half. And that's as quick as you can calculate it. Okay, so what do you do if it's, um, I don't know, uh, the tangent of, let's say, 5 pi over 4? Okay, 5 pi over 4 is a little bit more than 4 pi over 4. Again, think about where it's pi and where it's 2 pi by using the denominator of 4. 2 pi would be 8 pi over 4. If this was bigger than 8, you would subtract multiples of 8 to get an angle between 0 and 2 pi. Then we'll simply take uh, 4 pi over 4 is pi. That's 180 degrees if you forgot. And tangent of 5 pi over 4 must be in the third quadrant. Tangent's positive quadrant. Don't forget, every n pi over 4 is a 45 degree reference angle, and every 45 degrees is when sine and cosine are equal, and hence tangent will be 1. Is it positive or negative? Third quadrant makes it positive. I hope this helps. Try it out with your practice problems at home. One more thing you can add, if you're calculating all six trig functions, Let's do something like sine of 11 pi over 6, which is a 30 degree angle in quadrant 4. Write them in this order. So tangent of 11 pi over 6, and then cosecant of 11 pi over 6, 
secant and cotangent. Why write them in this particular order? It's because you've got sine over cosine right here. So sine of 11 pi over 6 is the sine of 30 degrees, 1 half, placed in quadrant 4, it will be negative. So negative 1 half. Cosine will be the number that adds with 1 to 4, which is 3. You're going to get root 3 over 2. It is cosine's positive quadrant, so it's positive root 3 over 2. Now we can simply take the ratio of these two to get tangent. You can also use your fingers. This time for tangent, ignore the twos because they cancel out as a ratio. So sine over cosine is root 1 over root 3, or 1 over root 3, which we will rationalize to root 3 over 3. Make sure it's negative because sine is negative and cosine's not. Then to get cosecant, secant, and cotangent, it's simply reciprocals. Just flip them all upside down. This will be negative 2, this will be 2 root 3 over 3, and this will be, since it's negative 1 over root 3, think of that one instead of what we have written, flip it to get negative root 3. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, and I hope you have success with trig.